Welcome everyone to uh, today's webinar where we'll be talking about space for safety and defense. So thank you very much again for, uh, for joining us. My name is Remco Timmermans and uh, I'll be your host for this webinar for the next hour to hour and a half. And uh, before we start, I would like to uh, really briefly take you through the agenda of today. Now the clicker starts, stops working, of course. Can you move to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, so the agenda for today, we'll start with a welcome and introduction, um, well, by myself, what we're doing right now. Um, uh, after that, we'll uh, have a welcome by the Netherlands Space Office, Coco Antonissen. Then uh, we'll go to a few speakers who will talk about their experience with um, um, safety and defense um, um, calls and solutions. Uh, we have uh, uh, Seva Matsaljuk from uh, OpNet. Then we have a talk by the Netherlands Enterprise Agency, RVO, about their involvement in uh, these funding calls. And then we'll dive into the funding calls themselves. So we'll look at a few specific selected calls uh, on the topic of safety and defense by uh, my colleague Andre. And after that, we'll move to one minute pitches. We've had uh, quite a few um, applications for uh, organizations and people to do uh, a one minute pitch on the topic of safety and defense. So uh, they will have the opportunity after we've done these plenary sessions that will probably be around a quarter to five, maybe uh, 10 to five, five to five. And after that, we'll go into networking. So we'll have several breakout rooms that you can uh, move into to meet the speakers, to meet each other, and to really talk about these opportunities that we're going to present to you in the next 45 minutes to an hour. So before we do that, uh, a few logistics. Uh, we've all been in Zoom calls before, but um, just to uh, let you know how we uh, are organizing this today, please use the chat, use the chat for um, introductions. So introduce yourself to everyone. Um, feel free to share your LinkedIn profiles. Uh, this is a networking session uh, primarily after all. Um, and also ask all your questions during the presentations. Please ask the questions to our speakers. Um, in the chat. For those of you on LinkedIn, um, unfortunately you won't have access to the chat, uh, but you can watch all the presentations uh, regardless. Um, we will turn off the live stream uh, once the networking starts, but uh, you can still join us on Zoom for free. Uh, just register on opencalls.space, you'll find a registration link if you go to opencalls.space to register and join us in Zoom uh, if you want to meet the speakers and, uh, and network afterwards. Um, in any case, the presentations and the replay of this webinar will be made available um, in the next couple of days, probably tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. All registered participants will receive uh, all these presentations in their inbox um, um, in a few days. Um, again, if you do not receive them, uh, you can either register now or um, contact us at info.groundstation.space and we will make sure that uh, you receive the information that you are looking for. Now, as I said, this is primarily a networking event. So uh, the purpose really is to get to know each other, to get to know uh, the companies, um, to get to know the funding opportunities. So uh, please, you're all invited to join the uh, breakout sessions uh, after we go through the plenary presentations. Um, we will keep the call open as long as needed. Uh, in practice, that means probably uh, half past five, um, we, you'll, you'll have uh, plenty of opportunity to uh, meet each other. To stay connected after this call, um, we're continuing the series of webinars, as I will uh, mention uh, in a bit after summer. But in the meantime, please join our Open Calls Network LinkedIn page. Go to LinkedIn and look for Open Calls Network. You'll find it, uh, uh, register for it or uh, follow that page. Or follow us on other social media. We're active on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn and on Facebook. You can follow us um, uh, there as groundstation.space. This um, event is part of what we call the Open Calls Network. Uh, the Open Calls Network consists of several elements, but the idea really is to um, focus on the space data calls um, in Horizon Europe and in other 
funding programs to highlight knowledge and expertise of the Dutch space sector and connect the Dutch space sector uh, with European specialists to form successful consortia to write proposals for these calls and to really benefit from each other's knowledge and from these funding opportunities. Where can you find this? Uh, you can find this on opencalls.space. See the next slide. So the Open Calls Network consists of two parts. The first one is this platform called opencalls.space. Uh, if you go there, you will find this selection of Horizon Europe and other funding calls uh, that we think are uh, of specific interest to the European space sector. Um, you can search through the calls. We will highlight a few calls during this webinar, but you can search on keywords um, in there. Um, and it, we try to make it very easy to find relevant calls related to space within the several hundreds of calls that Horizon Europe has. Plus we combine it with other calls, uh, for example, from the European Defense Agency that we'll, uh, we'll talk about today. The other element of the Open Calls Network are these webinars. This is the third webinar. Each webinar in this series this year will have a different theme today. Uh, obviously, we're on safety and defense. Uh, last week, we talked about digital industry. The week before, we talked about climate neutral and uh, smart cities. And after summer, we're going to continue with more themes. So please follow us on the networks that I mentioned before to uh, find out the themes that we're going to continue with in September. So. Uh, with that said, um, those are the, uh, my introductions. Uh, if we look at the agenda, we will now move to uh, Coco for her introduction. So Coco, if you could uh, take it from here, please. Yes, I will. Thank you for the great introduction. I'm going to share my screen in the meantime, try if it works. Yeah. I think it should work right now. Um, yeah, well, well, thank you for the great introduction. I'm not sure if I have a lot to add to that. Um, I only have one slide to present, but I would also like to welcome uh, all of you uh, from the Netherlands Space Office. My name is Coco Antonissen. I'm an advisor on satellite applications. Uh, and I would like to uh, give you some background information on, um, on why actually from NSO, Netherlands Space Office, we've asked the ground station dot space um, to organize these webinars and to also um, produce those fact sheets and um, um, and to promote uh, these, these opportunities in Europe uh, to you. Um, a little bit of background. Uh, I think a few years ago we noticed that maybe the Dutch uh, participation in um, in the space in the well, space calls from Horizon Europe were maybe not or less high than we uh, than we would like to see. And ever we thought, okay, we should help. Um, our sector, but of course also people from other countries, because in the end we all uh, need to work together. So I would also very much like to welcome everyone who is not from the Netherlands. Um, um, and yeah, we would like to, to help everyone to make your life easier actually uh, in this big complex system of all the calls that are available uh, around Europe. And there's many opportunities, but yeah, we realize this can be complex. And that's why we've asked groundstation.space to uh, create these fact sheets and organize these webinars. Um, yeah, so basically to make your life easier. Um, and the goals are, well, they are on the slide to improve the success rate of the Dutch space industry, but of course with uh, international partners. And please make use of the uh, open calls network that was already introduced by Remco. I think it's a very great source of information. Um, it gives a great overview of what is available uh, throughout Europe and not only within Horizon Europe and the, the, the destination space, but also in, your, in the European Defence Fund, uh, particularly interesting for uh, this webinar, I think, but also other European programs. Uh, I think that was actually all I wanted to say. Um, if you have questions, um, please reach out to me. My email is on the slide, or, and also uh, the email of my colleague, Damon Sluiter. Uh, he unfortunately couldn't be here today, but he's, uh, he knows a lot about the opportunities within Europe. So please reach out, reach out to us if you have any questions. And enjoy this webinar. Okay, thank you very much, Coco, for, uh, for your short introduction. And yes, as Coco said, if you have any questions to her, to me, to any of our speakers, please feel free to uh, use the chat and ask them, and uh, we will take the opportunity to, uh, to ask the questions. So with that, I would like to move on to our next speaker. Hope we can share really briefly the introduction screen. Thank you very much. Um, 
I would like to, uh, well, to hand it over to, uh, to Seva Matsalyuk of uh, Opnet to give us an introduction on how Opnet is active in the field of safety and defense. So uh, Seva, over to you. Yes, thank you very much. Let me just hijack the screen from you if that's okay. Yep. Um, so, uh, yeah, hi everyone. Uh, Seven Matsuyuk here. I'm a co founder of Upnet and also the commercial lead of the company. So, everything to do with sales, partnerships, customers, um, and of course, well, large government tenders. That is what I keep myself busy with here. And at Upnet, we, um, our slogan is to launch mission critical artificial intelligence. Um, so we help our customers navigate massive amounts of data and uncover, you know, key um, actionable insights within that data and ultimately make, um, well, well-informed decisions in real time. So before I go into too much detail about the EDF and, you know, what we're looking for, I wanted to just give you a quick introduction on who we are as a company. So we actually started as a boutique consulting firm over a decade ago, and um, we worked specifically with the telecom and IT industries, um, you know, helping solve massive IT outages, diving into these tremendous data lakes and figuring out exactly where the key issues were happening. And during this time, uh, we started investing into our open source product called NGNetMS, which has since been downloaded over 200,000 times. And that's when we realized, hey, you know, maybe we have a knack for making products. And we decided to slowly start pivoting away from a consulting business to being a product focused business. And um, that's when we decided to, well, um, take part in the Space Business Incubation Center of Nordvag, uh, which probably many of you are familiar with. Um, there we took part in the technology transfer program, got access to some space-worthy uh, deep tech AI algorithms. And subsequently, we also collaborated with the University of Amsterdam to develop uh, further AI modules on top of our uh, open source products. And well, after 10 years of active product development, uh, we decided to really then finally, uh, well, create a spin-off company, Opnet, which I'm representing here today, uh, you know, really focused on uh, bringing mission critical or um, artificial intelligence to the market. Um, so what do we do? Well, we exactly build uh, comprehensive AI products based on, you know, the decades of mission critical industry experience that we have amassed and maybe just some you know three very very key um, unique selling points about our approach is that a we never rely on model training uh, those of you who are familiar with artificial intelligence may know about the um, tiresome process of uh, labeling data sets creating training data sets well with us you don't need to worry about that uh, secondly, our solutions work in real time, which is obviously a very, very relevant uh, characteristic for the mission critical industry. You know, if we, uh, if the analysis comes too late, it's useless. And uh, finally, we also can detect unknown patterns, which means that uh, we can detect patterns that you aren't aware of, which is ultimately very, very relevant for mission critical industries as well. The way we see it is if you know about a problem, it's not too big of a risk for you. So you want to see and detect those black swan events that might cause a massive issue for you. We have a whole number of use cases where we've applied this technology uh, from telecom to uh, yeah, maritime to emergency management and even in smart agriculture. These are all mission critical industries, um, but I won't go into too much detail about our specific use cases. Today, I want to devote some attention to the EDF. Um, so the EDF opportunities, uh, well, we haven't heard too much about it just yet from the other speakers. Long story short, it's a defense uh, funding opportunity, uh, which aims to increase the research in Europe and also improve interoperability to improve collaboration um, between all European countries and also between the research, the corporates and the SMEs. And as an SME, of course, that's very exciting for us. Um, so I just wanted to highlight three key things that you should probably keep in mind uh, during the networking. And uh, well, if you approach us as well to potentially join forces here, 
the first one, of course, is that we need at least three participants from three different countries to partake in a consortium. Uh, if you don't have that, you're not eligible. And that's really about the fostering collaboration component. Um, you also need to make sure that you know you're, you're, uh, what you're doing is in line with the member states um, and the contributing interests of the union, as they say. Ultimately, your national delegation is also very important here. And well, finally, uh, which is also really good news for us and probably a lot of people on this call, is that the fund incentivizes the cross-border participation of SMEs. So make sure you know you get to those corporates and you you explain to them that by by working with you you that you're improving their chances um about us uh where do we fit into the edf so if for those of you who have read and looked into some of the calls there's just a very high level explanation of all the calls which are coming out they were just released uh, two three weeks ago and well we have until the 24th of november to get it all done um, in pink or red, I have highlighted the calls that are relevant to our company, the ones that we would like to be focusing on, and these are the cyber related calls and the digital transformation calls. Specifically, our key call we're focusing on is shared databases for image recognition. Um, we're focusing primarily on the thematic calls, but you also have non thematic calls available for SMEs, as you can see in the bottom right corner, also highlighted, um, which you can effectively propose your own ideas. Uh, to the EDF. But about the main call that we're looking for and why, well, we're participating here today, um, well, to foster collaboration and, and, of course, hopefully find some consortium members here. So our primary interest is the shared databases and integrated systems for image recognition call. And on the left, bottom left, you can see a very high level explanation of the scope of this project. Uh, what the EDF aims to accomplish here is to A, uh, create a um, database for uh, the um, imagery analysis effectively, uh, where data can be uh, stored, shared, and annotated um, to very, very quickly, obviously, well, uh, creates frameworks for that purpose. Secondly, um, to then on top of that database, develop software image recognition systems. This could be a, any type of object detection from, you know, detecting airplanes, uh, you know, monitoring the condition of different soils um, to for mission planning, et cetera. Um, thirdly, um, we would need to also uh, ideally have these uh, software systems working on the edge, so as near as possible to the sensors, which are picking up the imagery as well. And finally, to also objectively evaluate the performance of the software and integrated systems. Um, so we would like to primarily handle part one of this call, which is to create this database. And what we need, of course, is potential partners, whether you're corporates, SMEs, research institutions, please, all of you are welcome to reach out. Um, we're looking for expertise in object detection and, well, imagery um, analysis. Uh, we're looking for ground truth locations, which could help in the evaluation, and potentially as well some defense OEMs um, who could potentially help us test the technology on the actual devices near the sensors effectively on the edge. Um, a little bit about us in terms of our experience. Um, so 14 million raised by consortiums so far UpNet has participated in. Uh, we have a lot of experience in Horizon and Horizon 2020. Uh, this number is actually higher now. I think we just crossed the 20 million by signing a new contract uh, around two weeks ago. And we have a lot of relevant exp expertise when it comes to, um, well, this call. Um, so as you can see here, we have expertise in data fusion, data analysis, data management, you know, data preparation. Um, and um, yeah, so we have applications as well in, in even in mining. And, um, and we also have a specific platform being built in uh, which makes use of data cubes and artificial intelligence, which is almost a civilian uh, version of what's being asked for in this tender. So what do we need? As I mentioned, uh, object detection expertise, ground truth locations, defense OEMs, and of course, contacts with Dutch plus European MODs. The more we have in, um, signed on to, to well, support our project, the higher chance we will have for success. Um, if you're interested in joining or helping, um, you know, uh, if you see, think you can contribute to our consortiums, you know, do you have connections in the in the industry? Um, are you even in the Dutch Ministry of Defense, um, or are you working on other calls that might be interesting to, to to include us in? 
please contact me. Uh, my details are on the screen and the bottom right. Uh, yeah, very happy to, to have a chat and well, probably also there's an opportunity to, to chat in the networking. So that's uh, where I will conclude my presentation. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, uh, Seva, for this uh, very clear presentation. You actually wiped away all the questions that I had, so uh, <laughs> so well done covering uh, covering everything. Um, but there might be questions in uh, in the chat. Actually, there's a few people who would like to be in touch with you in the chat, so uh, make sure you have a look at it yourself as well, uh, Seva, please. Um, but um, yeah, let me let me let me ask you this: um, You're an AI company. Uh, you're looking for other technical companies to be involved in the technical aspects of these, um, of, of these calls. Um, what other partners might you be looking for that can help you form a complete consortium that can take care of all the elements, all the work packages in, in these calls? Well, um, well, typically, yeah, in, in Horizon calls, I would be saying, you know, we would need some legal partners, we would need some dissemination partners, we would need some coordination partners, but due to the EDF being, uh, and this being really specifically a research call, um, you know, I, I would say there's not much room for commercial exploitation in this activity or marketing or, or you know, the typical roles that we would see in, uh, in these consortiums. That being said, uh, coordination still very, very important. Um, as I mentioned, research institutes, you know, in the Netherlands, for example, TNO, uh, in other countries, we have other research institutes, very, very relevant here as well. Um, I think specifically in the area of testing and validation, you know, having someone independent uh, who, can, who can do that analysis and, well, um, verify if your technology works. Uh, well, obviously, uh, the governments will probably appreciate their input more than, you you know, a self analysis of if your technology works well. So that's probably what I can say to that. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Do you have, do you have uh, any specific countries that you have been working with and, and uh, that might be interested in, in uh, interesting for you to, to join in here or is it not so much country specific? Um, I think, well, this, from what we've looked, this has been put on a very high priority on, uh, on a European level because it's also, it's a, it's a shared database, right? So this isn't a, a call that has been really originated by one particular party. It's something that is quite, well, pan-European. Um, so I would say as if you're a part of a, a, the EU or from a contributing uh, state, you're very relevant here. So please do reach out. I don't think there's any, any country that's more important than another here. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Um, I don't see any other questions in the chat, so uh, so thank you very much for this, um, Seva. We will share your presentation with everyone, if that's okay with you. Um, because there was a, a lot of very interesting information, that list of calls uh, was very interesting. We will have another presentation with a list of calls, so uh, you will all receive long lists of lots of calls that, uh, that are relevant to you, so uh, thank you for... Uh, for uh, uh, compiling that and uh, sharing that with us. So uh, Seva will be available together with Taras, um, the other co-founder of uh, OpNet uh, after the plenary sessions in the, uh, in the chat. So please take that opportunity to, uh, to meet with these people. Yeah, if you can set up the next slide, we're getting ready for the next speaker then. And our next speaker, is um, going to be of the Netherlands Enterprise Agency, Victor Hartong, an advisor of RVO, who will talk about the role of the Netherlands Enterprise Agency in these calls. So um, Victor, over to you. Yeah, I will also hijack uh, the presentation. <laughs> uh, many thanks for giving me the floor. I'm Victor Hartong from the Netherlands Enterprise Agency. I am a national contact point for the Horizon Europe Cluster 3, Civil Security for Society and also national focal point for the European Defence Fund. So uh, we've already seen some slides uh, about the European Defence Fund. I will just do some slides in addition to this. Uh, and also as a, a quick reminder, this is a brief introduction to a program that is actually quite complex. So um, let me just give you the next slide. So what are the goals of the EDF? Um, basically, the European Union set up the EDF to get more strategic autonomy for the European Union. Uh, next to that, they also want to increase the defense industry within the European Union, again, to enhance this strategic autonomy. Second to that, they want to uh, support the defense research and development industry, which 
also would enhance this strategic autonomy. So basically all points towards that. And uh, next to that, there's also a cost saving uh, uh, edge where um, they want to, um, well, sort of promote that the, the member states will buy the same equipment. So when missions uh, are, uh, uh, they do collaborative missions that they don't have to uh, send three different technician teams for the equipment they send out. Um, next to that, there's a, a pretty big uh, funding uh, for the European Defence Fund. It's 7.9 billion for the programme until 2027. Uh, next to that, there are actually high funding rates for this programme. So for the research goals that Zeva just spoke about, there's actually 100% financing. It's not for all activities. Uh, the research goals are actually limited in what activity you can do. So that's why uh, Seva also said that the commercial side on research goals can be limited. Uh, the development goals have more possibilities for more activities, but um, those funding rates are uh, limited. So they are not 100%. Uh, typical example is for design, they're 65%. And for um, prototyping is, for example, 20%. Um, well, in that case, you can uh, look for additional co-financing for these activities. Uh, for that, you can um, uh, contact the, uh, well, actually me, <laughs> but there's a co-finance from uh, Ministry of Defense and from the Ministry of Economic Affairs, but I will share some details about that later. Uh, here, I also gave the uh, give the, the, the categories of the EDF. So there are several categories on which uh, the, the European Union wants to um, wants to uh, promote the research. Space is one of them. I did not include the calls as uh, Seva did. I will focus on the space calls for now, which is a responsive space system. Um, I will just read this from the slide. Innovative multi-sensor space-based Earth observation capabilities towards persistent and reactive intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, uh, and a space-based missile early systems. And as you can see with the RA, DA, DA, it is a research action, a development action, and another development action. Furthermore, uh, the EDF program is uh, interesting for SMEs because there are various stimulation uh, incentives to include SMEs, and that's also for the traditional defense sector. So uh, examples are that they want to uh, promote cross-border SME participation, which will result in additional percentage points. And if a, a certain amount of percentage of the eligible cost is allocated to SMEs, you also get an additional fine uh, percentage on top of these um, these financing rates. So that means, for example, with, with the percentage I just mentioned for design, uh, the, the activity, it means you get an additional uh, financing on that uh, activity. So you go from, let's say, 65% to 80% financing. Uh, next step, there are open SME calls, which uh, only SME calls can uh, yeah, hand in their proposal. So other uh, entities are not allowed. Um, they uh, are allowed to include research institutes, but only to a certain limit. Um, next to that, with the open SME calls, you can uh, get business coaching while participating in this, um, in this call. Next to that, also the SME participation is in the criteria for the proposal and evaluation. So that means that uh, you cannot just let the SME participate in your consortium and let them get a coffee for you, basically, because you, they have to have an active role uh, and an active contribution, a valuable contribution within the consortium. So you cannot just let them yeah, use them for only the financing. Um, we've just seen some eligibility rules, for example, that uh, the consortium must exist of three legal entities from member states or associated states. There's only one associated state at this moment, which is Norway. Um, furthermore, of course, your company must be an established company that is ready for innovation. That means that if you are a very small SME with only two FTE, that means probably you're not ready for this program. So you must be uh, yeah, ready to uh, be 
an international player. Uh, but of course, uh, you have, don't have to be a very big company for this. Next to that, uh, one of the eligibility rules is that there needs to be a full ownership, uh, management decision power, and the activity of the organization all needs to be within the member states or Norway in this case. So I will include Norway uh, with the member states. Of course, they are an associated state, but that means that other countries cannot participate. Um, well, for a full explanation of these rules, I highly recommend to get the EDF regulation and the guide for applicants. Um, there's just a very annoying banner here. I'll to remove it. Guide for applicants so you can review these eligibility rules themselves uh, you're for yourself and um, contact me if you have any questions about it, but I would recommend to do your own exploration for, at first hand. So I already started with this actually, so advice before you start, get acquainted with the EDF. Uh, read the work program. The work program for 2022 has been released on the 25th of May. Um, the guide for applicants, there's already one available. It's from 2021. The new guide for applicants, as far as I know, it has not been published yet. Uh, if you want to be informed when this is published, uh, RVO has a mailing list, well, interest mailing list for the EDF. So make sure you register yourself if you want to get regular updates uh, for yeah when 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 these new when a new guide for applicants comes online, for example, or there are other activities uh, that, that the commission organizes for the EDF. And of course, make yourself known with the guide for applicants that will be published and the EDF regulation, although that's uh, a pretty tough uh, read, uh, but well, at least give it a try. Of course, make yourself visible. Just now we've seen SEVA promote UpNet that they are interested in, in uh, joining an EDF call. That's the way to do it. Also join networking events and the matchmakings. Uh, that will be organized on a national level, but also on an international level. So recently we've seen that the commission has organized information days uh, for the EDF that was on the 30th of June and the 1st of July. Uh, and they also organized matchmaking on these days. Next to that on the funding antenna portal, you will find that you can uh, do partner search announcement where you can per call uh, give your interest in a call. Make sure that you give a very clear description on what you expect in a partner and what you are lo looking for and what you can actually do yourself. Next to that, I already discussed this a little bit. Uh, for the development calls, not all costs are covered. So only the eligible costs are covered. They have to be uh, give a direct uh, influence on the action. So indirect costs, which are not visible to the action, um, those, those are, um, considered indirect costs. Um, uh, there is a construction for that. You can find that, for example, in the EDF regulation, how they deal with these indirect costs. And in the guide for applicants, you can find how they consider these indirect costs. What are they exactly? Um, goal finance is then available from the Ministry of Defense and from the Ministry of Economic Affairs. Uh, in short, uh, Ministry of Defense uh, will publish uh, on the RVO website, what the priority list is. So they will give a priority list on which teams they are will, will be interested in, in co-financing. This does not mean that when you give in a request that you will automatically receive this financing. That all has to do with the proposal um, uh, you hand in at the Ministry of Defense, but in advance, you can of course contact them and discuss with them what interests them and align with them uh, how you should uh, write this proposal so it is in their interest. Next to that, uh, there's a co-finance from Economic Affairs. There, uh, for that co-finance, there is not a priority list. Uh, there is, however, a limited budget. So um, not every activity is covered. Um, so only, and out of the top of my head, uh, prototyping, testing, qualification, and certification activities are uh, additionally funded. Uh, and next to that, of course, the project uh, after evaluation should continue. So if you do not qualify for the EDF project, you will not receive money for this co-finance. Um, am I on time? Am I going off time? 
am I, I'm on time. I'm in time. Next to that, we look at the ranking. So the highest ranked uh, proposal will be um, uh, uh, financed first until the budget has been uh, depleted. Next to that, there's another module which is first come, first serve. Uh, so there, the, the opening date of the co-finance from economic affairs is very, very important to keep in mind. That's for the module A, and the opening date is on the 1st of August at 9 uh, a.m. Module A is to uh, basically help an SME, it's only for SMEs, uh, position themselves for joining a consortium. So for example, looking over a consortium agreement. Uh, for that, the SME can uh, get uh, help from an ex external consultant uh, at which they can receive 50% of the costs uh, at, with a maximum of 5,000 euros. And the, um, uh, the hourly rate that is maximum is 170 euros. Um, so if you have an interest in that module, please contact me. Uh, that's also on the bottom of the slide. Contact your national focal point, and that is me. The contact details will be in the last slide, which I think will be shared. So what can you expect from us? Um, well, of course, we give advice. So we can schedule a conversation, a consultation at which I can listen to what the company uh, that you present does. And then I can maybe have a look at in which call that would fit. Of course, you can already send in which call you're interested in, and then we can have a look together. Second to that, if you are a consortium leader from the Netherlands, I can also do a proofreading of this proposal. I can not write the proposal for you, but I can at least tell you uh, where the focus should lie uh, because I get a little bit more information because I'm in a national focal point network. And second to that, I can also help you find partners at which the uh, Netherlands Industry of Sec Security and Defense can also help you and which I can get you in contact with them. Um, that was basically my presentation. Um, if you are interested in the EDF, get in contact with me. I can also link you up with uh, the Ministry of Defense and the Netherlands Industry for Secu uh, Secu uh, Security and Defense. Um, I think that's about it. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Victor. Um, in fact, we have a few questions for you, questions and remarks. Can you scroll up a little bit in the chat window, please? We have a question, first of all, from Martijn, which is a bit cryptic to me, but I'm sure you know what it means. Uh, do you need an approval of NCP before applying? And can you tell us what NCP means? Um, yeah, so as I said, I'll have a look at how can I, how can I stop my sharing? Your sharing is already stopped. It stopped over here. Very good. Um, yeah, of course, I cannot, uh, as I said in the beginning, I gave a very brief introduction to the EDF. Uh, there are more eligibility rules. For example, uh, development calls require that you get a letter of intent or a letter of support from the uh, certain member states. It does not have to be all the member states. It has to be the top of my head, too. Of course, this is the minimum. So the more you get, the more... Um, more chances I think you will have at uh, getting your uh, uh, proposal evaluated very well in comparison to the others. Um, so there are definitely more uh, eligibility rules, uh, but I think this is this does not apply for the research calls. So, but you do not have to get approval from me. Okay, uh, we have a remark from Linda. Linda, maybe you want to uh, to mention that yourself instead of me reading it out from the chat. You unmute yourself, Linda, and, and maybe. Yeah, I, I, th I think I read it in the chat. It's about whether Israel can receive funding. Uh, at this moment, Israel is not an associated country at, for the EDF, so it cannot participate in the calls. And that means that also if the company has investors that are from uh, um, uh, Israel, that means that if they have uh, the, the, the decision power within the company, the management structure, for example, is uh, organized within Israel, that means that that company cannot participate in the European Defense Fund. Okay. What's the status or of the UK we, at this or, moment, uh, Victor? I'm sorry? You talk about Israel. What's the status of the UK in this, uh, in this regard? The UK is also not a member state. Okay. Very clearly. So only, only uh, member states and, and Norway 
as an associated country can participate in the EDF. Okay, very clear. Uh, and of course, we, we have the, the very in interesting structure, for example, with uh, Fokker and, for example, Fox IT. But their special structures have been made within the company and guarantees have been given. Uh, so they can participate. But there you enter a very complicated uh, and, and gray area where guarantees need to be given. Uh, if you are uh, want to participate and you do not uh, meet these eligibility requirements, uh, also, you can also contact me and we can have a look at uh, what needs to be done to give these guarantees. Okay. Okay, thank you. There's also a, a, a rather cryptic question from Andre, and maybe maybe Andre can can uh, say something. I have one question about the EDF regulation that you mentioned. Can you perhaps uh, put the link to that regulation in in the chat? Is that something that's that's publicly available? Yeah. Yes, that's publicly available. I can. Uh, I will. I will put a link in the chat. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, uh, also, in the interest of time, I would actually like to move over to Andre uh, right now. So if you can put up the introduction slide real quick, then uh, we'll move over to you, Andre. Um, so um, Andre is a, a senior project manager at GrandStation.space, and Andre will introduce to us um, some of the calls that we have selected specifically on the topic of uh, space for safety and defense. So uh, Andre, with that, I would like to uh, hand it over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Remco. Sorry for getting you dizzy a little bit. <laughs> okay, so yeah, um, first of all, um, what we what we envisage here is not uh, focusing on ADF, but ADF is such a hot topic that it it, it, it got the whole attention. Um, besides the EDF calls, also we uh, we selected uh, several calls from uh, cluster uh, cluster three, which is uh, um, secure society. Uh, some some DFS call disaster resilient society. So in, in light of that, I will repeat again the, the, uh, what is Horizon Europe, because all these DFS calls are under Horizon uh, Europe uh, uh, program, and they are part of civil security for society. Um, here's just uh, how much uh, research has been financed so far uh, within Horizon calls. And also I prepared a, a slide for EDF budget. Uh, indeed, 7.9, maybe something about uh, comma, uh, didn't make it to 8 billion <laughs> in, in the text that is present on the commission website. So I have 8 billion, but uh, it might be in reality 7.9 and something, as you mentioned, uh, Victor. Uh, so uh, where these calls that have been uh, mentioned by, by Seva or by, uh, by Victor, uh, they are on the left side of, of, of this figure is basically search and development. Um, and then indeed you have there uh, for the development calls, the EU co-financing uh, with the member states. Um, now going back uh, to what I said before, I will start and present the calls that we selected for actually introducing how the calls uh, ID uh, looks and then where to look uh, in order to speed up the process of uh, judging for yourself if the call is relevant or not for you. For the Horizon Europe uh, calls, uh, you will start with the with the name Horizon. Then you have uh, CL number three, which is basically indicates which is, which cluster uh, um, from from the from the pillar number two from the Horizon Europe. What is the year of the work program? So in this uh, this case, 2022. And then DRS it, it uh, codes the destination of the call, which is Disaster Resilient Society for Europe. And then you have an indicator of the call. So you will have here 01 and then 02, and then you have the title of the call. Uh, for EDF, um, structure goes the same way, only that it's not part of Horizon. So when you look for uh, in the funding and tenders, uh, SEDIA uh, portal, uh, you have to select the EDF, uh, EDF call and uh, not Horizon. So pay attention to there. Uh, or, uh, or otherwise you can leave uh, unchecked and then just uh, type EDF and all the EDF calls will be displayed. But uh, follow the same structure. EDF is the EO program. 
then the, the year of, uh, of the work program or the publication of the call, which is 2022. And then you have ERA, which means it's a research action. It's the one that has been funded 100%, uh, but it also can be um, the A, which is development action. Uh, and then in this case, um, space represents the category. It's something that also uh, Victor mentioned. And then you have the topic, which is response to space system. Uh, on top of what uh, Victor said, um, recently on, uh, on 30, 30 of June and 1st of July, uh, EDF uh, hold the uh, info dates. Um, the video will become available soon. This is not indicated on the website. Uh, but there are, uh, there, there's an extensive uh, PowerPoint presentation or slides uh, made available, uh, which basically summarizes uh, a lot of information, starting from uh, the calls, uh, from topics, from funding, from eligibility, and then please do consult also uh, the link here if you want to inform yourself about uh, EDF. Um, yeah, uh, I wanted to put also here because uh, we look a lot at the uh, SMEs. So I started with a very interesting uh, maybe opportunity uh, for somebody that already has uh, such an application uh, developed at the higher DRLs. So I love, I'd like to mention the uh, EDA, uh, European Defense Agency uh, Defense Innovation Prize. Uh, it is a 30,000 prize. Um, the, the, yeah, registering uh, for this prize uh, has opened on the 12th of April, 2022. The deadline for uh, registering uh, and entering into the, enter the context is 9 September, 2022. Um, yeah, this year, the EDA Defense uh, Innovation Prize uh, will focus on space debris. So if you have a, an application that focuses on space debris, uh, maybe this is something interesting for you, uh, and then you can uh, you can enter into the uh, contest. Um, yeah, who can apply? As I said, non-traditional defense industries, uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, research organizations, and university involved in defense research and development activities. Uh, moving a little bit uh, further, we have a lot of information to share, so that's why I'm talking very fast and then uh, flying through through slides. Um, I will start with the, with the calls that are not related to EDF, the calls that are actually listed on the Horizon Europe. You have here uh, a, bunch of, a bunch of calls coming from DRS or uh, from uh, border, uh, for border. Um, you have uh, each call is hyperlink. So basically, if you link, on, uh, if you click on, uh, on the blue uh, text, you will be redirected to open calls. Uh, portal uh, developed by uh, groundstation.space and then you will retrieve from there a fact sheet with uh, a summary of information about the call. Um, so these are the calls that I listed for uh, Horizon. They are all 2022. The, the, we also identified two calls uh, that will be opening in uh, 2023, um, both of them on, on, uh, on the space destination. So. Moving a little bit further, uh, this is how the fact sheets look. So you have here the fact sheets for the call that I presented a little bit earlier when I explained the ID. Uh, um, so this is a fact sheet for the DRS 0102 call. Uh, you can retrieve in a snapshot uh, what is the funding, what are the deadlines, the, the, what are the countries, and then what is the scope and the topics. Um, and then on the right side, you have also uh, how the EDF calls uh, fact sheet uh, looks. So pretty, pretty much the same, but of course, uh, there are different, different elements uh, specific to the call. Um, here we have presented a list of EDF calls. Um, I think I shortlisted uh, yeah, 11. We, we have shortlisted, uh, shortlisted 11. So uh, it seems that the number uh, increase or decrease, we have the most, but uh, basically we haven't covered the, the, some of the calls that Seva mentioned because those are coming from the cybernetics uh, point of view and from artificial point of view. So in our exercise, we try to focus as much as possible on, on, on space related uh, or space sector related uh, calls. Um, so these are the calls that we, uh, we selected. Uh, it's true that the course that we selected contains all the three space uh, calls mentioned by Victor uh, earlier. Um, yeah, I, I, I basically 
needed to, to change the information about the national uh, focal point or the national contact point uh, because uh, listed on the website of EDF was Boy Dacier. But as Victor mentioned uh, earlier, he is the person to, uh, to get in contact with it. So please do, do so. I also added his email here. Um, and then the phone number, I think it's from, uh, from Boy. Uh, so I think just use uh, Victor's contacts uh, and then please also use uh, Victor in the breakout session. Um, besides the matchmaking sessions, also uh, ground, ground station to space uh, does a lot of work in the area of mapping. Uh, small and medium enterprises, companies, institutions, organizations that work in the in the space domain. Uh, and then we realized for the past uh, one and a half years uh, two very interesting uh, ecosystem or space industry maps. We did the space industry map uh, of the Netherlands. Uh, and then the space ecosystem map of the Czech Republic uh, with the support of OSPA, European Space Agency, uh, Space Post Program Agency. Um, you can uh, use this, um, uh, these maps uh, or ecosystem map in order to identify maybe relevant partners uh, for, from the Netherlands or, or Czech Republic. On top, of course, of the, of the listed uh, willing partners in the Horizon Call uh, for each horizon calls, this is something that has been offered by the by the portal or even by the EDF uh, call. Um, yeah, some general information. Uh, very good that uh, the Victor was here. Of course, he already made himself available. Um, I think he specified that the advisorship comes only for NL organization from from Dutch organization, uh, and then I'm actually reiterating this. Uh, for accessing the calls uh, and uh, the portal uh, where you can search uh, the funding and tenders, uh, then you can use the link uh, to, to Sedia. And then for the calls that I mentioned earlier are part of Horizon Europe, uh, besides the ADF Info Days, you also have the Horizon Europe Info Days, and there you can also find a lot of interesting information for each, each call. Recently, uh, for the DRS call, Disaster Resilience Societies, uh, society, the info days just happened on the 20th of, uh, of June, so it's very fresh, and you can see there a lot of information call by call and what the project office actually requires for, for the course or expect from this course. So that would be my, uh, my presentation, then. All right, thank you very much, Andre. Um, in the interest of time, I only have one quick question, if that's okay. Um, I got one question in the chat. Can you share this presentation? The answer is yes. Very simple answer. The answer is yes. Uh, you will receive all the presentations that you've seen from all the presenters um, in your inbox, probably tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So, uh, so thank you for asking. Um, Andre, one question. Um, how can GroundStation.Space help people who are interested in uh, organizations who are interested in uh, applying to these calls? Well, uh, Ground Station does space as a really large network um, of, of, uh, of companies, SMEs, institutions, more than 2,000. Uh, and then these are, uh, these are uh, soft contracts, these are real person contacts. Uh, and also, uh, Ground, Ground Station, does, station uh, does a lot of work in project development uh, or tendering. Um, also, we are involved in innovation management. Uh, we also realize uh, market consultation. Uh, also, we do a lot of capacity building, but also we do a lot of matchmaking uh, uh, for the Dutch companies uh, looking up abroad, trying to contact partners from abroad. And then uh, we have done uh, in the past uh, this, and then we are also doing at, at, at the moment trying to set up a consortia where uh, Dutch companies are represented in large consortia with really competitive uh, partners from other uh, European countries. Okay, okay, thanks very much, Andre. Um, in the interest of time, I would like to move ahead with the next section. If you can share my next slide. Uh, and this is about the one minute pitches. And, and this is really to start uh, the networking part of this uh, of of this uh, this webinar a little bit because we'll see a few companies several companies that I mentioned here introduce themselves. Um, I realize not all of them are here, but at least five of them I know are here. So um, I will um, um, let me see. The ones that I have confirmed is the uh, uh, Bernard from the Royal Dutch Air Force, Helder Fontes from Inestec, uh, Juan Perella from Alpha Unmanned Systems. We have Gedas Weitkus here from Geomatrix, 
and I saw Ivan Tomljanovic from Oikon uh, joining the call. So we'll have those five. If the other people are here, then uh, please uh, inform us in the chat and then we'll add you to the list. But uh, we'll take them, uh, take the one minute pitches in this order, if that's okay, starting with, uh, with Bernard Baus from the Royal Dutch Air Force. So we have your slides, so I will put up your slides and uh, then I guess you can take the floor, uh, Bernard. So if you can put up the slide here, please. Here's a second. Yep, there's the one. All right, Bernard. I'll, I'll see it. And uh, you hear me as well? Yes, absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, hello, everybody. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Bernie Baus. I'm the lead of the Space Department within the Netherlands Air Force. And we have a very interesting uh, start as our defense bill finally included space as an official domain. And we now get a formal organization. That means that we also have a roadmap. And um, some calls were already repeated, but I like to confirm because the power is in uh, repetition. Uh, the free uh, EDF calls are supported by our interest from the MOD. And so we uh, are really interested to discuss more about the content and to find the right uh, consortia to uh, make the right proposals and support those for the EDF calls. Uh, it's not only the RDF calls, it is also through EDA, we do uh, some lower TRL research. And um, on the next slide, you see a whole overview of the subjects where uh, what has been uh, proposed, uh, identified as technical building blocks we need uh, in Europe as well. So there's also a synergy, what's happening in the military side of space and the uh, synergy between the civil part of it. So we're interested in architecture and policy, and well, you can read all the list. I won't spend time on in a minute. And another thing, we're also uh, so we're focusing ourselves on national level uh, to develop small satellites with niche capability sensors like hyperspectral sensors, laser communications, and uh, frequency monitoring. And we are focusing on radar technologies for, for space situational awareness. So you see my email, it's a very busy time, but I'm still interested to connect with everybody. And uh, I think that Victor made a very well presentation. He would also be the first entry point for all your questions about the EDF. And I'll uh, see you uh, in a few minutes in the round, uh, in the meeting table. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Bernard. Um, with that, I would like to move over to uh, Inestec. So if you can put up the slides for Inestec and uh, Hilda, if you're, Yes, I'm here. Perfect, we can hear you fine, so let's share this. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, uh, yours. Okay, good afternoon to everyone. So, my name is Elder Front from Inesh Tech. Uh, Inesh Tech is a private non-profit research association, and uh, we are mainly in, in three uh, cities in Portugal, uh, that is Porto, Braga, and Vila Real. We are more than 800 researchers in, uh, working in many areas. And uh, from these 800, uh, 350 have uh, PhDs, like myself, I'm uh, representing the Telecommunications and Multimedia Center. Uh, if you mo can move, <laughs> please can move to the next slide, please. So uh, in, in this uh, Telecommunications Center, we, we work in wireless communications. Uh, so we, we create these uh, uh, on-demand wireless communications to, to give communications to different application scenarios. Uh, so we use uh, drones too, to create airborne, uh, like an airborne mesh network to, to, to provide internet access and communications to people uh, or, or services. Uh, we have also a uh, vast experience working in maritime environment to, to provide communications to offshore sites. And uh, in the picture you, you see below, uh, so we have also experience working in uh, 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 European projects uh, where, where we did maritime surveillance, for example. And uh, so, so we, we create these on-band communications that are location traffic and energy aware. We also have experience in network simulation where we create these digital twins of these systems in, in simulation. We, we operate in different technologies like Wi-Fi, 5, 5G, 6G, satellite, IoT. And, and we also have uh, experience in antenna design and characterization. Uh, we have our anechoic chambers to, and, and lab equipment to do that. And uh, recently we, we have been uh, working in digital beamforming 
using FPGAs, which are uh, important to, to satellite use cases also. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, um, Helder, for that uh, for that clear presentation. Um, can you please leave your, uh, if you haven't done so already, your contact details in the chat? I'm not sure if I saw them in this presentation. Yes, I, I left them, and they are okay. also in the first slide. Oh, okay. Thank Sorry, I, I must have missed that. In, uh, <laughs> when I was thank you very much. So thank you very much for your uh, for your presentation. Thank so you. the next uh, presentation that we have lined up is uh, Alpha Unmanned Systems, Juan Perella. Um, if you are here, then we will. Yes, I'm here. Very good. Then we will set this up, and the floor is yours. Yeah. Hi. Uh, well, I'm Juan Perrella from Alpha Unmanned Systems. We are a Spanish uh, manufacturer and designer of uh, tactical UAVs. Uh, those uh, are the UAVs. Uh, those that you are seeing are the UAVs that we have designed. The first one is the Alpha, is the Alpha 800, which uh, is the smallest one and can fly up to 2.5 hours with a two kilograms payload. And the other one is the biggest one or newest helicopter, which can fly up to four hours with four kilograms payload. Uh, both of them, both of them are uh, ready to operate in, in maritime environments. Uh, they have a payload base. They can provide a power to the payloads. And these helicopters are just perfect for this kind of uh, safety and defense applications and also to, to, to test your, your products, basically, to, to develop a research and development uh, task in, with them. Uh, what you can see on the on the right side of the screen is basically our ground control station. Uh, this is the computer that we uh, designed to control the, the UAVs. It's also capable of integrating new capabilities, so it's uh, very flexible and, and we can reach ranges up to 50, 50 kilometers per of uh, of uh, of reach with these helicopters. Uh, we think uh, these are very powerful. These are already in use by military organizations and research and development organizations all across the world. So uh, if you move to the following slide, basically, you will be able to see my contact details. And of course, I will be happy to collaborate with you in designing projects and participating in projects for this uh, calls that you just presented. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Juan. That was uh, that was very concise and very clear. So uh, thank you very much. And if it's okay with you, we'll share this presentation with, with everyone so they will uh, they'll be able to see. If you can stop sharing this now. We will uh, we will move to the next speaker and um, um, let me see. I didn't receive a presentation, uh, Ivan, but uh, if you would like to take the floor, um, Ivan Tomljanovic from Oikon in Croatia. <clears throat> yes, thank you. I believe. Uh, yours. Okay, let me just quickly share it. Okay, I think the screen is not swapped. Yes. Yeah, we can see your slides. Uh, Okay. Uh, oh yeah, you, we can see the road. Okay, now this should be better. Yep, 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 there we go. Thank you. Okay, great. So my name is Ivan Tominovich. I'm the head of laboratory for remote sensing and GIS here at uh, Oikon, and we are established in Croatia. Uh, our company has a plethora of different things that we can offer, and we also have some experience doing projects with NATO, uh, also Fraunhofer Institute in Germany and the European Space Agency, where we are already working on our third project with them. Uh, our services are not only nature protection, as it says here, but also uh, natural resource management, feasibility studies, industrial ecology, environmental protection. But what also works here, we are very versatile in remote sensing and telemetry, IT and GIS. Uh, we also provide a lot of um, different views on, on, on everything because we cover everything from forestry, geodesy, geoinformatics, uh, biology, and many other things within our uh, small but let's say potent company. Uh, thus, we are very interested in any kind of corporations or if anybody wants to have a little bit of a chat later on, we would be more than happy to, to discuss uh, potential uh, for, for uh, further uh, talks and similar. Uh, we have 23 plus years of experience. We have more than 350 satisfied clients and we have more than 1,450 1, completed projects. 
Uh, our mission is that we want to design practical, pragmatic, and cost-effective development solutions, but we also do ad advisement and works on con concrete projects. Um, for any more information, apart from this, here is a QR code where you can get our promotional pamphlet to get a little bit more details. And also there's a contact details here and you can check our website or directly contact me or, or my colleagues through the email. So that would be a, a very short and concise, I hope so. Okay, thank you very much, Ivan. If you can uh, share that presentation with me, if, you, if you're okay that I share it with all the participants. Yes, yes, sure. If you can thank send you. it to me or to Katya, that would be really good. Um, we have uh, a last minute and thank you, Steve, for uh, confirming in the chat. Um, we have uh, Pixam from Malta. Uh, Steve, if you can uh, take over and give us your one minute presentation. Yeah, sure, thank you. So, as you rightly said, I'm from Malta. Uh, just for a minute to share my screen, please. Are you seeing my presentation? Yes, we can see. Okay, so uh, it's a company based in Malta and uh, we do specialize in geospatial software and mathematical tools. Uh, these tools are used for computer vision, are used for drone data sets. And when it comes to drone data, data sets, we do have our own software which merge all drone, drone images into one complete data set. Uh, these are also used in remote sensing for time series analysis and also used with IoT sensors, which are mainly uh, based uh, and built for the agriculture industry. As I mentioned, there are various industries, uh, mainly they are based uh, in the Maltese islands. Uh, the industries are in the agriculture, uh, planning, there are also regional authorities using these tools, uh, power and energy, and also starting from last year, we are these tools are being used in the marine. Uh, as a company, uh, we do have experience with both local funds and also European funds. And uh, when it comes to Europe, we are working with partners uh, from both the academic side and also the industrial side. Uh, partners which comes from Austria, Cyprus, France, uh, Spain, uh, Spain and, and, and UK. Uh, we, we, we've been uh, in this sector for these last uh, five years, uh, but I personally have been uh, also working in the academia for more than 15 years. Uh, this is my brief uh, presentation, uh, and if you would like to get in touch, uh, there is the email down below. Uh, so please uh, send me an email and uh, we will be getting back. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. That, uh... Very timely. So uh, thanks for letting us know and thanks for sharing this. Um, again, if you want uh, people to see your presentation, if you can send it to me or to Katya, we have been in touch over email, then uh, please do so and we'll include it in the package that goes out to everyone. Um, so with this, I think we have uh, gone through all the one minute pitches. We've gone through all the presentations. So thank you all for, uh, for staying with us in, in such great numbers. Now really is the time to go into networking, but not before I have shared a few more final messages. And I promise I will take not more than one minute of your time in doing so. And if you can yep, share the screen, um, just to point out, as I said in the beginning, that uh, this is not the last webinar. This is the last webinar before the summer break. We're, we're all going into summer holiday mode now, um, I hope. But after summer in September, we will be back Please sign up for our newsletter. Please sign up for our LinkedIn page that uh, I showed in the beginning. Please follow us on all social media channels so you will be informed of, uh, of the next webinar series that's going to start in September and will run through October, November and possibly December of this year. Um, next slide, please. So now really is the time to, uh, to meet your potential partners. It almost sounds like a dating show. Um, and in a way it is because we really want you to be successful in finding partners to uh, write proposals for these calls. Uh, for that, we have organized breakout rooms. So uh, at the bottom of your screen, you will find the bottom, uh, the, the, the button for, uh, it, it's the one with the, 
the four squares in it where you can select a breakout room. Um, we will set up a few breakout rooms where you can uh, meet the speakers, where you can meet the people who, uh, who did the one minute pitches. So uh, please have a look at the, at the bottom of your screen to see um, who you want to talk to. And uh, all our speakers have um, uh, confirmed that they're available. Can you stop sharing the screen, please? So we can all see each other. Um, so please go to the bottom of your screen where you can see the button for the breakout rooms. And I don't see it in my screen. It's probably hidden under more. Yes. Okay. If you don't see it, it might be hidden under more and you can find uh, which breakout rooms to, uh, to join, uh, who is where. So um, Katja, if I may ask you to, uh, to maybe set up uh, one or two breakout rooms with the speakers as we uh, as we have them, then uh, we can uh, we can all talk together. Of course, here in the plenary room, if you unmute yourself, turn your camera on, um, I will now give the floor to well, basically to uh, to all of you to uh, to talk among each other. Again, if you haven't done so already, leave your LinkedIn details in the chat. We will save the chat uh, so we will have that information so we can pass people to you if we find. Uh, interested uh, parties to uh, to write proposals for for these calls. So again, go to the breakout rooms section and uh, assign yourself to uh, to one of the uh, rooms that we have made available. So with that, I'm going to uh, uh, log off and leave it to you to uh, meet one another. So uh, thank you very much to all our speakers. Thank you very much for our participants. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you again after summer.